Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 205. Now, we left off in our last tutorial. We just got our item system up and working again. And there's a few things I was playing around with in our character, our player character class. And there's a few things I wanted to change. Uh, I really want our player character to uh, become static, so we don't have to keep getting a reference to it. As we start adding more uh, components to our game that interact with our player character, we're going to have to keep getting references to our player character, storing them off and everything else. Uh, I'd rather just make uh, some sort of uh, static instance of our player character and not have to worry about getting a reference ever again. And that's actually what I'm going to do, or at least start in this tutorial. And if you actually look at uh, what we have so far, uh, this act can actually be commented out as well. We don't need that anymore. Uh, there's really not that much we've got in here. Uh, we'll be removing this soon because we're going to be making our health bar static. Uh, yeah, like there's really not a whole lot in here. We'll be getting rid of this. Uh, all, all of these lines. Uh, but I, I don't really want to make the edits in this script because we actually do have quite a bit in here that uh, we have commented out already. And I want to keep this commented out stuff for the people that you know have purchased the scripts to support the tutorial series. Uh, it helps them out to be able to see some of the older code. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually create a new script and I'll just call it PC and I'll inherit from base class. So it's basically going to be a clone of what we have so far in here uh, without all the commented out stuff and then we're going to take that and we're going to go over uh, the topic of singletons today. Uh, originally I didn't want to cover singletons yet. I wanted to wait to a little bit further on uh, to start covering topics like this but uh, it's the best way I can think of to actually uh, get the design that we want for our player character. Uh, so with all that said let's just go ahead and start creating a new class. So I'm going to come down to Unity. Uh, I'm going to close up resources. I want to open up scripts. And I'm going to drop this in my character uh, scripts folder here. And I'll make a new one. And like I said, I'm just going to call this PC for player character. Now I will eventually, after we get it all up and functioning the exact same as our player character script, uh, go ahead and rename it to player character. Uh, but for now, I want it to be named something different. Uh, so I can go in and later just take out this class, the player character class, out of our game and see where all the references are in my game so far because I'll get a lot of errors when I do that. So I can actually go in and say, okay, you know, here's where my errors are and here's where I want to go instead of getting a, a reference to the player character. I uh, just use that st static instance. Uh, hopefully that makes a little sense. <laughs> Uh, so let's just go ahead and just start copying stuff. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, I'm going to get rid of everything in here right now. Even though we will be using start and update uh, later on, we don't need it right now. Well, the first thing I'm going to want to do in here is create my instance of my, uh, well, the static instance of this class. So let's make it static and it's of type PC and I'm just going to call this instance and I'm going to start off by setting it equal to null and then actually right underneath it I'm going to create a public static uh, returns PC and I'm going to call this instance with a capital And let's set up a getter for this. Now, there's a few things I'm going to want to do in here. Uh, when I try to get an instance of this class, uh, first thing I'm going to check to see is if uh, this instance variable up here is equal to null. So basically, is this the first time I've tried to get an instance of this class? So if instance is equal to null, we'll want to set this class up, or at least set up this instance. And to start off with, I'm going to throw out some debug log statements. And I'm going to say instancing a new player. I'm just going to say PC. Uh, PC. And of course, make sure you have that in quotes. <laughs> 
I uh, just so I know when this is fired off. And now the next thing I want to do is I want this attached to a game object. I want it attached to our character, or at least our character mesh. Uh, for now, I'm just going to create a. Uh, I'm going to instantiate. Uh, just, let's just start off with instantiating our muscular character. Although we have gone over how to save the character mesh, I'm not going to. Uh, try to load the character mesh just yet. I just want to make sure it's working then I can play around with you know getting it to load what I want So I'll, I'm going to instantiate And of course what I'm going to want to instantiate is a resources dot load And I'll fill that out in a minute uh I want it to go as a game object, so I'm instantiating as a game object. And what do I want to load? Uh, for now, I'm just going to load my muscular character prefab. And actually, let's just save the script and let's go ahead and look at my hierarchy. I do have some errors. Uh, okay, it needs a string in here, so I'm just going to put an empty string just to see what these errors are. I uh, have an error right here, it says, and it's because I need a return type. And I'm just going to return the instance. It helps actually read the error. <laughs> okay, so I've got rid of all of them, all uh, the warnings. But what I, want to, what I want to go over is my resources folder. Uh, let's see, we're going to go down to character, model, uh, prefab, and then of course under prefabs I have my human models, my male and female. And I'm just going to instantiate one of these, but before I do, I want to add this script to it. Uh, so let me go ahead and add it to the menu for now, just so it's easy to get to. So I'm actually just going to cut and paste this over here. But I'm just going to call this PC. Let it save, let it recompile. It should show up in my menu. I'm going to make sure this is selected. I'm going to come up to components, hack and slash, uh, player down here, and there's my PC stats. And that'll add it here. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because since I already have my player character script attached up here, it's pretty easy to actually instantiate one of these. And then I can just start clicking on stuff like my weapon mount. I want to keep all the same mounts and all the same mount spots. And I don't want to sit there and have to go hunt them down again. It's not hard, it's just this is much faster. And we need that. And instead of deleting this for now, I'm just going to deactivate it. And then I'm going to make sure I have my game object up here highlighted. And just hit apply. Then, of course, if I come down here and look, you'll see it all set up. And you'll notice there's no on off button for it. That's fine. Uh, let me see what we'll we're. Delete that. Uh, save my scene. And so I'm going character, model, prefab, human male. Okay, so let's just start typing this out. Of course, this really should be a string that we put in our game settings. Uh, but like I said, right now, I like to keep all my new code to the, to the script I'm working on. So we have character, model, human, Male, maybe, and uh, I forgot prefab in here. Yeah, it was a capital P, everything singular. Well, here, let me just move this over or down, I guess, and we'll scroll this up. So, character, model. Right there. So character model, prefab human, male, and muscular. So that should get me all the way to uh, where it needs to be to actually create the aim object. And after this game object is created, I'm going to be able to, I want to find it easily in my hierarchy. So I'm going to go ahead and just change its name for now. And I'm just going to call it uh, PC. 
And uh, why didn't this change? It's because I used a colon instead of a semicolon. And I'm going to go ahead and add the awake function here. So we need a public void awake. Now singletons work a little bit differently if they're a mono uh, behavior as opposed to if they're just a, a regular C sharp class. Uh, you can't have a constructor if it's a mono behavior. So we just do everything inside the awake. Just treat the awake like a constructor. And this is where we're actually uh, kind of getting around that. So in here we're just going to say instance equals this. And let's just save that off, see if we have any errors. Uh, we do not. I'm going to clear it. And I'm going to need some way to actually call this and instantiate it for the first time. So I can do this through any other script. So I'm just going to grab the first one. And since this is being done in the awake, I want to make sure that when I'm calling this for the first time, I want to do it in the start, just to make sure that you know all my awakes have been done so far. So I'm going to come down here to start. And there's a few ways to do it. Right now, the easiest way would be pc.instance.awake, not instantiate. All right. And actually, I'm not sure if I'm doing anything in the awake here. I probably am, and I am. So I want to make sure I'm calling base.awake. Uh, this makes sure that everything, since this is being inherited from base character, this makes sure that everything that's in the awake function in the base uh, over here in the uh, base class or base character is being done before anything is being done here. And you want to make sure that stuff is done. So let's go ahead. We'll save that off. Uh, let me just make sure I save the other script. I did. And let it recompile. I'm going to hit clear. So when I start it up, uh, here we go. We have uh, a new game object called PC. And if I go and look at it, here it is right here. Now, there's going to be a few more things we have to add to it, like our character controller, and there was a few other scripts we had attached to it. Uh, what were they? Uh, player, okay, all player scripts. There was two more. There was one about movement, and I believe one about animation, and I believe we also need a character controller. Uh, but for now, we actually do have a character being created for us here. And we'll, re we'll want to actually call this from our game uh, manager script uh, but we'll switch that over in a little bit we just want to get this up and running so let's go back into the code now we notice here when we're instantiating uh, this is what we're making and this is going to actually be a load function later on to grab the the mesh that we have saved and after that we can put in where it needs to be done and again, we're just going to load up uh, where the character last saved in game and load that up as well. And then there's a quaternion identity for which direction they're facing. I hadn't actually thought about saving that yet. Uh, it's not really a big deal right now, so I'm not too worried about it. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. It's just a quick overview of our uh, singleton. Uh, we'll, we're going to be adding quite a bit more to this. Uh, there's a way to have it uh, be multi-threading safe. We can add a lock to it. Uh, we haven't even covered anything in multi-threading yet. Uh, so we're not going to touch anything on that. And one of the benefits of doing it this way, if uh, we come down here, we make another uh, function. We'll make it public. And we'll make this static. And we're just going to say display weapon mount uh, name. And we're just going to throw out a debug log here. And remember that in this class, in our last tutorial, in order to get a reference to our weapon mount, we had to come down to the start and create this static game object here, which we call double M or WM. And then we assigned our weapon mount to it. And then up here, 
we use that uh, static reference over here. Uh, we don't have to create a bunch of these new statics. Uh, that's all handled for us now. So now we can just say instance dot weapon mount dot name. And I can get it this way here. So let's go back into our uh, where we're creating it. And we'll just say PC dot display weapon mount name. And then we'll just come back into Unity. And there's no errors, so let's just start it up. And there we go. If we selected our character, our PC, and we'll see the name is actually called Weapon Mount, and sure enough, there it is. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for this tutorial. And let me just quickly clean some of this up don't need these I just wanted to demonstrate that we could do it and I'll see you in the next tutorial bye bye